Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing them to pay with the in-stream currency struts which they earn by watching. We begin this video with R3 King and Katak's mission to Titan. As you can see, it is now making orbit around Titan. I decided to get some screenshot views of the arrival. Uh, the ship is huge and it is powered by an augmented arc jet from KSP Interstellar. Uh, this gives the specific impulse of an ion engine but with better thrust. Uh, so that is what we're powering up. It does require a very large nuclear reactor to make that happen and radiators. And so here we are making orbit. Now Atre King and Katak paid for a landing on Titan actually, not just orbit. So we have to get our landers, which are on a different ship with Mr. Doobie and Dylord Root. And uh, the one at the end, uh, to the left there, is the lander for Titan. But we have these four other landers that are for other moons around Saturn, and we are going to use them. So uh, first of all, we had landed on Enceladus, but now we're transferring out to Tethys. And then we'll also make our way to Dion before going to Titan to provide the lander for Atari King and Katak. So, so there's the burn to leave Enceladus, but there are also other burns in order to get to Tethys. And we'll do those in Saturn space as we go around basically in line with the rings of Saturn, as the moons are. So here we're doing an inclination correction, very obviously. And then finally we arrive at Tethys, and that's what it looks like in real solar system. And our capture burn is not too much, uh, on the order of 500 meters per second. And here we go with that. You can see that Mechjeb in the bottom left there does not quite understand the burn time for this engine. And I think it's reading the delta V right, but it's tough to tell sometimes. Anyway, so we get to deploy these landers. Uh, you can see it's a big cabin and small fuel tanks, and that's because these moons of Saturn don't require a whole lot in order to land. The orbital speed you can see is basically Minmus speeds, you know, 270 meters per second. So we don't need a whole lot of fuel. The Titan lander is a whole other story. That is a much more massive endeavor there. In fact, I think it's more than 50 tons. So here Lila Root is heading out and making a descent. We have main engines, but I also had enough RCS thrusters to slow us down. You can see we are actually slowing down just on the RCS here. And I was thinking about trying to land with just the RCS uh, because again, it's very much like Minmus altogether, but that didn't turn out to be possible. We will need to relight the main engine in order to set down safely. But uh, here's our approach to the surface of Tethys. Plenty of fuel. Uh, plenty of fuel. You can see the MMH and Mon 3. We used storable fuels for all these landers for safety's sake. And yeah, well, I think we can do the rest with RCS here. It's slowing down a bit. Very gentle. And there we go. Touchdown. Alright, so that little route is on Tethys. And we get him out. And he gets to plant a flag. Mr. Doobie will get to do the next one, the Dion one. And I just make a generic message, uh, just putting these landers to use. Very simple. And job done. On in. This is all in sandbox mode, mind you, so, you know, there's no need for science or anything like that. The goal here is more logistical than anything to do with funds or science or anything like that. So, we get back up to our awaiting mothership and dock. Always nice with the views of Saturn in the background, of course. Okay, so next up Dion, and so we make our transfer from Tethys to Dion. And this is the burn out of Tethys. Tethys was sort of a lighter surface, uh, Dion is a rather darker surface it seems. And so here we are approaching that. 
and we are making orbit here. Uh, very lumpy sort of surface, not quite as inviting if you will, though they're, they both give the impression of being barren. And the orbital speed around Dion is a little bit faster than around Tethys. But still, we basically execute the same way. We've got plenty of Delta V in these little landers to do this job. So the main engines slowing us down here. When I say main engines, they're 12 kilonewton thrusters, two of them. And then RCS on the way down. It looks a little bit brighter close to the surface than from orbit. And down. All right. So, Mr. Doobie gets to plant a flag. On the flag comment, I made note of the textures looking better close up. Incidentally, Dalarud and Mr. Doobie did not pay to land on these moons. I decided to make use of them for that. They were conscripted, if you will. They just wanted to get into orbit around Saturn, or that's what they paid for anyway. But anyway, I decided to launch this huge ship. I forget whether this was launched on the Monument Rocket, I mean the whole mothership. It might have been. And yeah, get all the Saturn stuff done. Well, the basic flag planting, if you will. Alright, and here we are docking. And that's that. Well. After having used those landers, we've used some of the fuel, and we really don't need four of them. I mean, we keep bringing them back, but they're just dead mass if they're short on fuel. So I move the fuel and resources out and uh, deorbit this one, and deorbit a second one as well. And then we'll have to move one of the others in order to keep things balanced. So I make that maneuver here, and so we have less dry mass on the mothership to worry about. Not that we're short of Delta V, we've got quite a lot left. Though there is the matter of getting back to Earth at the end, and also this transfer to Titan is not cheap. It's 2000 out there and of course we have to get into orbit around Titan which will cost a lot as well. So there's just a transfer burn 2000 meters per second, there'll be a correction. We have to keep an eye on the little landers that we separated so that we don't crash into them. Uh, but here is our transfer forming up. And we already have the mid-course adjustment plotted, you might be able to see there. And here we do the very substantial mid-course correction. And with that, the two of them, Dalarut and Mr. Duby, will be on their way to meet up with Arthur and Katak around Titan. Of course, just the rendezvous is going to take some Delta V as well. In the meantime, Arthur wanted me to check out the possibility of making an asteroid base. And we had picked out an asteroid that was going to encounter Earth in a very fortuitous way. In fact, it would only take a very little Delta V to capture it into orbit around Earth. And so I said about making a unit that would capture it into orbit. It uses the Attila thruster, the augmented arc jet that we've been seeing, and also drilling units because then we can use the ore in the asteroid, convert it into fuel, and get more Delta V that, like that. So here we are launching with boosters on the first two stages of Saturn V there, so uh, omitting the third stage. That makes for a rather a stout rocket, but it is what we needed. However, we would really like to make sure that we keep track of the asteroid. I somehow managed to deselect it or detarget it, so while the first stage had run out, we needed to target it again because otherwise we are not going to line up with it properly. And here we continue the burn with the second stage, the J2 engines, and finally we separate the second stage off. And now this unit is on its way. And there's the tail thruster and oodles of Delta V. Basically it doesn't need to be much more than Delta V in drilling units after all. And we wait for the asteroid to come in. You can see how close of an orbit it's, it's almost in orbit already. So very tempting. But the question is, how heavy is this thing? Now, these aren't stock asteroids. In real solar system, they increase the mass of the asteroids. And it, I'll just tell you right off, I think 
we might need to reduce the mass of them if we intend to actually pull them into orbit around anything. I mean, we could visit them and everything. We could make, maybe even make a base on them. But actually pulling them into orbit around the planet, that's a little bit more difficult. I couldn't turn around in time. We were going too fast and this thing doesn't turn very quickly. So we actually passed by it. Thankfully, I didn't aim directly at it. But yeah, now we can slow down here. We were turning to the retrograde marker. And there we go. All right. And then, of course, we grab onto it. We're still heading towards Earth periapsis. as you can see the altitude dipping down. So if we could do the burn quickly enough, uh, we'd be in good shape. However, the asteroid is 11 million tons. So you can see me pointing at that. 11 million tons. Well... It's not wrong about the zero meters per second of delta V. Let me put it that way. And we're not use we're not drilling fast enough. You can see we're we are drilling for resources. We are getting the ore, but nowhere near quickly enough to get the 17 meters per second we need to pull it into orbit. We only need 17 meters per second, but we have none. And even though we're drilling, we're not really accumulating much. So, and we start wiggling all over the place because I had to turn towards the, the maneuver node and that didn't work out all that well. Uh, but anyway, eventually we got stabilized and I tried to figure it out a little bit better, but we are still not getting enough. I mean, with the current thrust, 700 kilonewtons. I mean, how long is it going to take to do 17 meters per second with, with 700 kilonewtons? when you're pushing something that's 11 million tons. It's gonna take a while. Now, technically our Earth escape is increasing, which means that if we had the Delta V, eventually, eventually maybe, we'd be capturing. But there was hope there, but as we get away from periapsis, it becomes a worse and worse situation. This is actually the next stream, and I didn't have an alarm for a lot of route and Mr. Doobie arriving at Titan, which we got distracted from. And so I looked at the life support, which I normally do at the beginning of the streams, and decided to bring some people back from Mir. Bearfill had wanted to be the only person on Mir anyway. But fortunately, I remembered the Titan situation in time before things got too awry. And I proceeded to get a little encounter with Titan there. And it'll take 13 days, so in the meantime, while they're on their way out to Titan, we can now launch that mission to Mir. And I decided to do so with a Saturn V. Uh, we are basically evacuating Mir around the moon in this case, except for Barafil. Uh And so off it goes, carrying a makeshift Orion. A very strange Orion to bring people back. But... Uh, Orion is supposed to be able to bring people back from the moon, so that is a uh, potentially good pod to use. And there's the second stage, and finally the S4B stage per usual. Except I accidentally ignite the service module engines on the Orion pod. So I have to shut those down and ignite the J2 now. There we go. Mistakes do happen. And so we're just completing orbit there, and then we make our transfer, no problems. The rocket is meant for this sort of thing, and we know its capabilities. So, after that, we have to separate off from the stage. Actually, we do that in uh, lunar orbit. We carry the stage all the way with us. Unfortunately, you can see I accidentally separated off the service module, and now the pod is all on its own. In order to save it in lunar orbit, I decided to use one of these... Uh, resource vessels, the food, water, and oxygen ships, and to try and rendezvous with it and tug it in. I don't know whether that was a good idea. Probably it was a tremendous waste of time to try and do this, but since it was theoretically possible, I decided to try it out. So here we go. We're trying to tug this into Mir. I mean, potentially the supply vessel, if it had enough delta V, could push the pod out back to Earth. It just takes about 800 meters per second. Unfortunately, we don't have the Delta V. In fact, we don't even have the Delta V to get it back to Mir. Uh, just a little bit shy. I think it was reading 370 something and we needed 390 something. And so we're just short. I decided to do part of that. I contemplated moving this entire module to try and bring them in, but 
ultimately decided that that was not a good idea for one reason or another, I forget what it was. I did deorbit the service module and the S4B, make sure it crashed into the moon, and then turned back to this business. So that's all stranded, <laughs> the, the uh, Orion pod is stranded around the moon with the supply vessel, and we just focused back on Dalaru to Mr. Doobie arriving at Titan. Uh, eventually, I'm sure I'll have a solution to bring people back from Mir, and we'll see what happens with that Orion spacecraft. So, capturing around Titan and getting a rendezvous point with Arthur and Katak's vessel, Arthur's Titan mission. That is what the so-called amphibious assault ship looked like around Titan, and here we are approaching the other big ship. And the problem is, Arthur's Titan mission doesn't have an airlock. It doesn't allow for EVAs. So we do have to dock the ships together, and this one didn't have a forward docking port that was convenient. It has side docking ports, but it'd be really awkward to try and dock on those. So we actually have to move off the Titan lander in order to dock the two ships to get Arthur and Katak into this ship. Or we could have just sent the Titan lander over there to Arthur and Katak's ship, had the lander dock with it and picked them up uh, either way. But ultimately I want the amphibious assault ship to bring the lander down to a lower orbit first before the lander proceeds with the actual landing. So, and I didn't want to do that with, the, with Arthur's Titan mission because that has less delta V. So here we are docking to t the two together. I mean... It, it's a fun thing to try and dock them together anyway, and there's what it looks like around Titan, a uh, glorious sight and everything. So, you know, sort of worth it. And here we are transferring them out, our eventual Titan landing party. And then separating the two vessels, now there's nobody on board, the big rotating HAB vessel. And here we are aiming at the little lander that was floating by and the lander comes in to dock again. Alright, so now the amphibious assault ship will bring the lander down to a more serviceable orbit. Now, the nature of the lander is a little bit weird. It has two stages, and you might think, well, that's a descent stage and an ascent stage. That's not the case. Both stages are necessary to get off of Titan. We're landing with the parachutes because Titan has a thick atmosphere, but because of the thick atmosphere, we also wanted to have two stages. It really takes a lot of Delta V to get into orbit around Titan. So, uh, the two stages, the first stage is actually a proton engine from the second stage of proton or the third stage, either way. It's an RD0210. It only has one ignition, so we can't use it to start the descent or anything like that. We have to use the RCS. And the reason we used the proton engine is because we needed something about that size in order to have enough thrust to lift off of Titan with this mass. And we preferred to use storable fuels for this mission because it was such a long duration mission to Titan. So I wanted to just make sure that we were using storables so we have all that UDM, H, and NTO for the proton engine. And then the upper stage is this, just a MH and MON3 engine. So all storable. And the RCS thrusters are all on the upper stage. So we had to use the RCS thrusters to start off because we only have one ignition with the first stage engine. And here we are descending. The atmosphere of Titan starts at like 625 kilometers. So it's a long, long time on the way down. And it took a while for the atmosphere to start slowing us down too, but eventually it did. And it's sort of like Venus in terms of the time it takes, maybe even longer. Because at least Venus, the atmosphere doesn't start that high. I don't know why Titan has to be this way, but it is very inconvenient. So anyway, first of all, our little drogue shoots are really, really tiny because we don't really need that much drogue shootiness. And our full deployment altitude is 2,500 meters, and that's when the big shoots come out. And up they go. And of course, this was all very harrowing. I mean, I was very nervous during all of this. And there is a flaw, but we'll get to that in the next video when they have to go back up. So here we are, but the parachutes worked and we are down to 4.4 meters per second, which should be safe. But even so, I was worried about bounces, tipping over, you know that business. And here we are, 
finally setting down on Titan. So, we'll see what happens to Arthur and Katak in the next video. With this, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.